Coyote to base. This is Coyote 1. Requesting for close air support at my position. Well, in case you skipped, got dazzled, or even bored by the lengthy intro, I'm going to be talking about the Forgotten Few 2, a dynamic campaign generator. But what exactly makes this different from the abundance of other armor free offerings such as Ground Breach, Dynamic Recon Ops, Force Recon, or even larger scale scenarios such as the Ever Classic Pilgrimage, or more recently, Antistasi and Vindicta? It really stands out to me because it incorporates a bit of everything that makes the aforementioned missions great. The mission file is created by King N. Hail to the King, baby! Who of which has a forgotten legacy, it seems. The first initial public version of the Forgotten Few was released on Armor 2 back in 2011, and its latest iteration for Armor 3 has been actively developed since 2017 to present day. So, as you can imagine, the mission has some pretty awesome DNA. Browsing King's Workshop, you'll notice there are different versions of the scenario, each tailoring a different experience, such as Altis and its vanilla factions, Chinaris with Cup and RHS faction support, and my personal favourite, a Vietnam experience, utilising the awesome Sog Prairie Fire. So, let's take a deeper look and actually load up the scenario. Although at the start there's a plethora of options to start standalone dynamic missions, its real awesomeness lies in the ability to string together multiple dynamic missions into a believable auto-resolve strategic layer that simulates a conflict between the factions chosen. At the heart of this dynamically generated campaign, bloody hell, really need to stop using the word dynamic, anyway. It's basically a hub screen that features between missions in which the player can carry out mission planning, platoon management, review reconnaissance data, and, when available, organize support assets. With every phase of the scenario, you're presented with a choice of three missions, usually ranging from easy, normal, and hard. The way mission locations are chosen respects the current overview map and just kind of works. Mission type stroke objectives are also nicely varied, with most mission types having two or three variants of the parent task. Most locations of enemy concentrations are respective of that particular map's existing POIs, or instead it will use relatively flat areas for the more expansive generated hostile camps. The scenario also has ambient placement of anti-air assets, optional intel, Camps, patrols, vehicles, you name it. However, be warned, not every single suspected enemy placement is confirmed as existing, nor do you have the knowledge of what actual assets are going to be placed there. This will become important later as you plan your team's insert and extraction. The difficulty is obviously influenced a lot by the placement of these POIs and the proximity to other locations as well. The availability of your backup team will also heavily guide your choice of mission here. So for now let's just accept the mission and jump into the mission planning screen. Let's start with the platoon management tab. Here you can see your playable squad, callsign Coyote, and your backup team, callsign Jackal. 
These are your two on duty or active teams as it were. We can also see our reserve, which is basically your bench of eager substitutes. Here you'll notice all units have primary attributes and even statistics. Fair warning, your units will suffer fatigue after consecutive missions. This makes sensible rotation a must, especially if you've set a high campaign point score. There is also a welcome ability to assign custom call signs to individual units, providing a more personal connection to the men under your command. Role players rejoice. From the platoon structure or management screen, we can also outfit our teams with weaponry and equipment. Some really useful templates are already provided in the drop down menu. For example, day and night loadouts, silence variants, anti tank loadouts, so on and so forth. Or alternatively, you can assign weaponry and equipment manually to each unit. However, there's no arsenal. You have to select from presets as it were. But this is great gameplay wise as it forces the player to weigh the pros and cons within their unit. For example, most stealth based loadouts come with the sacrifice of crappier optics for instance. You'll see what I mean once you start toying with it, it's quite clever in this regard. Some added advice, always check your deployment time against terrain sunrise and sunset time. It might just influence in your decision making, or you can be like me and just find out the hard way. Moving on to the field intel tab, I bloody love this. It really makes you feel like you're weighing up the probabilities of what you'll encounter in your mission. It'll generally give you a rough estimate of soft and armoured targets, as well as any anti-air or QRF forces. But it will also be quite vague at times, and that's why I love it. Combined with the loadout conundrum, it just makes your planning take on an extra spice. Combine this within a multiplayer environment, and you'll naturally get the good old British term Chinese Parliament. Am I allowed to say that these days? It's military slang, who knows what politically correctness line I'm crossing here. But basically it means everyone has a say on the planning process of the AA, so they're spread out over three kilometers. Right, so that's, okay. That's probably why it's listed as hard, So, because as soon as you draw attention in one area, you're going to have to fight your way to the other area. Okay, so it will actually land us on LZ recoil. If we wanted. Uh, and I could reroute it if, if you want to go for helicopter drop, but obviously that's not very silent. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking, mate, it's within, it's less than a kilometre away from one of the AAA positions. Yeah. I'm thinking. If you can see, insert then. Boat insert. I'm thinking LZ Felon from re like reroute it so it goes south to north. Or right. we boat insert. Anywho, how's the weather? Yep, you can even plan according to the weather. Forecasts include current weather and any likely developments, again, impacting other decisions made within the planning phase. No point taking a sniper rifle to that assassination mission, especially if the visibility is the same length as your wang. So down to the actual planning screen, you'll notice there is options for the type of insertion, whether that's air, land or sea. This will vary upon your support options available. Again, this is another mechanic that encourages players to plan appropriately with future missions in mind. For example, you might lose a helicopter after a hot landing and not realize that's going to be gone for at least a mission. Sometimes units won't become available due to maintenance. It kind of gives players the types of frustrations felt by many special forces in real life, I can imagine. There's options for enabling close air support during the insert. Again, I would wield this at your own peril. Other notable choices include a free use waypoint for fine tuning uh, flight paths and vehicular approaches and the inclusion of a rally point once your second team, obviously if available, successfully inserts. Before approving your plan and starting the mission, it's always good to save. On that note, Kingen has created a custom saving system. You'll notice you get one auto save slot and three user saves. 
really handy if you're playing the mission on different terrains, especially so if you or your group prefers multi-session gaming. Once the mission begins, load up the chosen transport vehicle and you're off to the AO. If properly planned, this will be largely uneventful. However, there is a chance of ambush when in ground vehicles, the ever-looming threat of anti-air when taking air options, and the large open vulnerability when using boats. Oh, that looks like Vietcong. Big Ong, shoot, Daddy! Oh, the firing arc wasn't great. That's my excuse. <laughs> Whatever your main objective may be, the majority of the time you're on your own. Apart from missions where you're acting as a QRF or supporting an allied attack, you'll want your approach to be quiet as possible. Remember the intel map with all the possible enemy sites? Well, that's not all you're going to have to worry about. Foot and vehicle patrols will also be in operation. Sometimes there's a lone enemy truck that will pass through a POI. Other times it might actually stop and unload troops. As an added danger, civilians are also present in the mission, forcing you to really check your fire. You can try your best and try to stay on your assigned mission objectives, but you might want to take detours and engage targets of opportunity, which will all contribute to your overall campaign completion points. With this in mind, even smaller so-called easy missions with simple objectives can quickly escalate into bigger engagements, either by choice or just due to the fact there's been a monumental f*** up. Talking of choice, in most operations you have a choice of whether or not to conduct an extended or sustained operation. What does this exactly mean? Well, instead of waiting for an exfil or planning your cross-country escape route, you may wish to continue your rampage. It acts as an additional mission, but without the chance of resupply, essentially taking extra objectives with the loadout you finished your current mission with. You may also be missing close air support or any other supports for that matter. The plus side to this is that these operations will reward you with bonus completion points. Once your objectives are complete, you need to start thinking about how the hell you're getting out of there. It's something you should really be thinking about as early as the planning phase. Sometimes it's doable just to get out the same way you got in. Other times you'll need to take more, I'd say, drastic measures such as even planning a cross-country hike through enemy territory, avoiding camps and patrols on the way as you push to reach your own lines. Although, if you do have the support available and you don't have any immediate threats, you can request uh, extractions by helicopter, uh, boat extractions and even ground vehicle extractions, obviously the uh, latter two being the most riskier. On a successful extract, you'll be greeted with the summary and point screen. Points are allocated and deducted based upon completion of objectives, destruction of enemy assets, casualties taken, supports used, etc, etc. These are then tallied at the bottom of the screen and added to your overall completion points. Cool music and countdown will ensue and you're picking your next mission or in fact enjoying a well played and completed campaign. As I've stated numerous times in the past, armour provides us with those quick but deadly moments. You know what I'm talking about, the usual oh nothing has happened for the last 10 minutes or 15 minutes whatever as you trek across country only for a firefight to erupt out of nowhere it's the ever closer rumbling of engines in the distance which dissipates after a monumental close air support run then the silence again as you wade through your destructive weight it's these moments that forgotten few can highlight and bring into focus why we love armor and as I mentioned at the start of the video, my favourite version has to be the one built around the SOG Prairie Fire maps. For the single player users out there, try adding SOG AI mod by Johnny Boy into the mix and you'll literally have one of the most complete Vietnam Special Forces experiences to date. For the folks mixing it up online, it's even better. And if you're just after a dynamic single or multiplayer experience with a sense of progression and immersion, then I implore you to check this mission out. It is such, I, I firmly believe it's an underrated gem on the workshop. I actually, I don't know if I would go as far as to say underrated. I, I just think it's often 
overlooked when compared to the bigger scenarios out there such as uh, Antistasi and Vindicta and the likes of them. Um, it gets lost in the noise. Uh, a lot of people with polls about like, oh, which missions should I go for if I've only just started an armor? Guaranteed, it's always dynamic recon ops, anti-stasi, things like that. I'm like, this is, this should be on that bloody list, guys. So if you've not played it already, just, just do it. And on a side note, I think there's been five months since my last video and all I can do is all I can do is apologize. I'm really sorry, guys. I'm trying to sort some kind of maybe routine is what I'm, the word I'm looking for. Uh, but, you know, real life is like with everyone. It takes turns, twists, etc. Um, I am really looking forward to getting more content out. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys have to say in the comments. It's good to be back and I'll hopefully see you all uh, sooner rather than later. So, ciao for now.